Greetings, my name is Brother Herman of MakeEmSeeTheTruth.org. We are a nonprofit organization commissioned solely by the Holy Trinity to be used to restore values back into our communities less fortunate. These are the brothers and sisters that are walking around without the correct information, which is uh, aired knowledge that they persist or operate in. And because of this, they keep coming up short, finding themselves in the distasteful state of God's sight versus the pleasing state of God's sight. And this will only lead to irritation and frustration, which will then end in their demise to be a, a state of disparity or perished state of existing and not truly living. Jesus said it best. He said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Perish means to be separated from the God's presence. Our God's presence means that abundance, means that joy, means peace is there. And if you are separated from all of these things, then that can only mean that you are in truly in a miserable state of existence. And that the only one that I can think of that lives this way constantly, day in and day out, is Satan and his followers, the fallen angels, which are now the demonic spirits. So we are you being used to restore the values so that we can keep some from being a permanent part of Satan's regime. We're asking that uh, the most fortunate of our community Bless the less fortunate by assisting Make Them See the Truth on the front page of our website, makeemseethetruth.org, and click on that link. It'll take you to a donation site. Whatever you give, just know we're going to open up lifelines for spiritual, medical, and legal counsel. We're going to do what we can by God's lead, leading, by Holy Spirit's leading, by Lord Jesus' orchestrating abilities to help and assist those who are finding themselves in a parish state. We're going to be used to pour that back in which was freely given to us, and that is the, the sole purpose and mission of MakeEmSeeTheTruth.org. If you need help, go to the third page of MakeEmSeeTheTruth.org. Click on the link of the application assessment form. Fill it out as an entirety. Make sure and be sure to put spiritual, legal, or medical of uh, issues in the comment box and we will definitely have someone contact you within 24 hours of our receiving of your application we are will be uh, sharpening each other we will help and push each other into their greatness this is the sole purpose of make them see the truth.org my name is brother Herman and you have my word on that now this is the second composition, series number three, part D, at, uh, regarding frequently asked questions. I believe frequently asked questions there are so many that we've decided to go ahead and answer many. We're going to be answering the question of attitude. How important is it? Attitude. How important is it? Well, we like to use the Word of God to answer all of these frequently asked questions. So I would like to go ahead and get out of the way at this time and just let what pours in comes through. This is the Holy Spirit at work, Lord Jesus' orchestrating abilities, and this is a part of our Father God's plan. If it was not so, you would not be watching it right now. Now, attitude is very important, especially all times during all storm during the storm before during and after the storm and what are you talking about what I'm talking about is this we are to praise God for everything in all things including the storms including the blessings including the tests including the trials including the the just mundane times that are seem like nothing's really happening and there's a lot going on within you, around you, and this is uh, the work of God. So we ought to praise God just for who he, are, who he is. We ought to praise God just because of what he's already done. If we praise him for no other reason, it was to be because he sent his son, the Lord Jesus, in our place to take on a debt that our forefathers incurred that we came into. We inherited the debt. Jesus took it upon himself to remove that debt. So if we should praise God for any no other reason, it should be because of that debt being removed. 
But I can think of many other things and many other reasons to praise God. I can think about when I look around and I see a brother and a sister maybe walking on a walker that they cannot walk without it. And they may be having an oxygen tank hooked up to this walker. And I don't have one. So I'm giving thanks and praise because of that. I can think of a brother or a sister that might be rolling around in an in a extra set of wheels that they didn't ask for nor saw coming. But they wind up in a wheelchair. And I don't have one. So I can give thanks and praise just for the simple fact that I have two legs to walk on. I can look around and see some of the brothers and the sisters on the side of the road by the malls and the outlet centers begging for money just because they don't have a place to stay. Uh, most of them. Many of them are in that predicament. Some of them are just trying to get over. That's their job. But uh, many of them are really in that predicament. And I have a home and a roof over my head. I can think of a reason to praise God just for that reason. I can look around and see that same brother and sister asking for the dollar to feed themselves and we have the money coming in in abundance. It may not be as much as Trump, Donald Trump or Bill Gates or even Oprah Winfrey or Tyler Perry, but we have enough that we don't have need of. For he did say so himself. You will never see a preacher begging for bread and you will never see his kids go without. So I can give thanks just for that reason because I don't have to go around and begging for bread. And that can also mean spiritual bread. I can give thanks because I've received my spiritual meats, my spiritual bread. I've seen the poverty, and that is one of the reasons why we're making see the truth.org today, because I have seen the poverty, the spiritual poverty, the spiritual uh, uh, lacking and needy of the bread and the meats and the milk of the spirit, of the word. And I'm thankful now because I have been given that. Because why? Because I got sick and tired of walking around without it. So I can give thanks because Jesus heard my cry. Father God heard my cry because they sent the Holy Spirit to help me regain or obtain this knowledge and also uh, interpret it, understand it, gave me the ability to understand it and apply it. So now that I operate in it and now I am used to give that which is freely given back. So I can give thanks because now today I walk out my purpose. I don't walk around in the world merely lost, merely uh, existing, still in the dark, still in the ignorant state of thinking, perceiving, and speaking. I can give thanks because I am no longer there. Now I'm able to you be used to help some brothers and sisters come from there by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity's power, our Lord and Savior, our Father Jehovah, Yahweh, Yeshua. I can give thanks because they are the ones who are using Brother Herman to bring in some from the wilderness. So I give thanks. I can give thanks just because I can wake up and go outside and see the fresh air today. I am not in captivity behind walls, behind gates, behind steel. I can give thanks just because I'm physically free for whatever that means because none of us is really free. But I can give thanks because I do have somewhat more freedom than I did say two, three years ago. I give thanks. I can give thanks because now today I am at peace, at rest. I am at peace and at rest from the from the tests and the trials that come across my path just like they come across your path. The only difference is, is now I have the understanding of who's allowing it, which is our Holy Father. It's a part of his plan. And I can understand why he's allowing it because now he's strengthening me to become greater than what I was, than greater than what I am. So now every day I become greater than yesterday and I can give thanks because I can see today that it's a part of his plan. I can see why the test was allowed. I can see why the trial was allowed. I can see that when I make it on the other side of the test and the trial, when I get through the tribulation, I give thanks. I give thanks before the tribulation comes, the trial comes. I give thanks during the tribulation because I know now why he's allowing me to go through it. And notice I keep saying the word allow. He's either causes or he allows, but he only does those two things, one of those two things for his glory at the end of the day and our benefit as a whole mankind at the end of the day because now that I can see clearly the lenses have been cleansed it's not about Herman anymore now it's about Jesus so everything that he allows me to go through I give thanks why because I know that he's going to use these uh, growing tools these growing 
pangs. I can see that he's going to take these growing pangs and turn them into blessings, which is the fruit, the strength, the, the stature that's needed the, in the wisdom of God so that I can be used to pour into the brothers and the sisters that are still lacking. So I give thanks before the trial during the trial and after the trial. Why? Because he said it so himself. He said it so plainly when he talked about the old lady and the tax people and the and the and the people that had the the most money at that time that was given. He said that the who gave the most when the lady only had two cents to give. He said who gave the most out of all of them because they gave whatever they could out of the abundance that they had. And the lady gave everything that she had, all two pennies or whatever it was. It may have just been one penny, but whatever it was, it was everything that she had. She gave the most. He said, truly, she is the most blessed because she gave everything back to God. So she gave thanks before her test, during her trials and after, because that's what happens when you truly believe in the power of the one that we call, we claim we serve. We trust and we rest in the before the storm. We trust and we rest in his power to see us through the storm. We trust and we rest in his, his gracious reward or recompense when we make it on the other side of the storm. We're thankful before, during, and after. It is so important and vital to have this type of attitude and the reason why is because you prove yourself to Father God. You prove yourself to Lord Jesus that you are capable of going through anything without crying, complaining, groaning, and moaning, which does you a disservice, and it does a disservice to everybody who is around you, walk, watching you, watching you go through this, crying, complaining, and moaning. And all they want to do is help you cry, help you complain because they want a reason to cry and complain. But when they see you praising God before doing it after the storm, the trials, the tests, after the tribulation, then they say, if he can do it, if she can do it, why am I not doing it that way? What is wrong with me? What am I lacking in? What area am I lacking in that I cannot praise God before, during, and after? Why can't I see the silver cloud in the cloud? Why do I always see darkness around me, over me, before me, behind me? Why do I always have to perceive this way? And the simple answer is, it's because you haven't asked Jesus to come into your heart, the Father, to sup inside your heart. You haven't asked them to send the Holy Trinity, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost to clean it up. Because once you get that heart cleaned up, once you get it renewed and re restored back into its preserved state as it came into the womb, through the into the world, it came in clean. And then it got dirty along the way. It got came in contrite and then it got calloused along the way. It came in soft and then it got hard along the way. It came in understanding and receiving, but it, then it got uh, zero tolerance in a rejecting state along the way. This is what the heart condition came into the world and then it got became along the way. So what we're understanding is, is how to get back to that state that we were in when we came into the womb. And the only way to get back to that state and be able to praise God before, during, and after with the proper attitude of being thanks, giving thanksgiving for everything, just letting it drip off your tongue, just letting it roll off your lips, is to ask for the Holy Spirit to come in and do its job, which is to clean it back up. Once that takes place, you can mark Brother Herman's word that you will then be able, become able and capable of praising God before the storm, during the storm, and after the storm. But it will not happen until then. So make no mistake about it. You must cry out because you have not, because you ask not. This is Jesus' words, not mine. All right. Blessed are the doers of the word. The cheerful doers, the cheerful givers. God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful doer. Not one who does in begrudging states. 
because he has to, because it's his job. So he feels that he has to, but he's not doing it or she's not doing it because she loves to. That's the difference. You see? The attitude plays a huge part in how you see your glass. It'll either be half empty or half full. We're trying to, or we're being used to restore values back into our communities that's fortunate so that they can go from seeing it half empty to seeing it half full. Why? Because we're changing and renewing the mind like Romans 2, 12, 1 through 2 tells us to. We have to renew the mind in order to perceive properly. Clean up these lenses so that we can see the glass as half full instead of half empty. This is Brother Herman of MakeHimSeeTheTruth.org. Once again, I like to get out of the way and just let the Holy Spirit have his way. But this word came through my church today, Genesis Church on uh, uh, 49th Street South in Gulfport, 16th Avenue. You might want to join us if you get a chance in St. Petersburg, Florida. This is Brother Herman of MakeUpSeeTheTruth.org. I want to give thanks to the brother who was used today to bring forth that word. I just kind of touched on it a little bit, and that's what this video is about. It's very powerful. I thought it was would be a, a great idea to go ahead and do a little justice with it as well. But make no mistake about it. All the word comes through the vessels from the Holy Trinity. And the Holy Spirit is the one who is speaking when we speak the word of God. He is the one who helps us interpret the, what we're reading when we read the word of God. He is the one who helps us make sense and understanding of our visions when, we're, when they're being given by the kingdom of God. We thank you. We praise God and we thank you, the people. So uh, once again, if you need assistance, go to the third page. Click on the link of MakeUpSeeTheTruth.org. Click on that link, fill it out in its entirety, hit that submit button. But before you do, put legal, spiritual, or medical issue in that comment box. And we thank you. We'll have someone make contact with you within 24 hours. If you simply just want to give and assist us, make no mistake about it. You can never give too much. God loves a cheer forgiver. Go to the home page of makeupseethetruth.org. Click that to assist button and it'll instruct you through the rest. Once again, I pray that everyone teach one. If you have received, give back. It is not yours to keep. You must give it back. It is called reciprocation. We serve a reciprocating God, and that is what our Lord Jesus expects. For he will not continue to pour new wine into old skins. You must release so that he can put in some fresh wine. And that's what that means. We want to praise God, and we want to thank you. We want to sharpen each other. And until second composition, series three, Part E, the last part, have a blessed, beautiful, beautiful night.